Hello everybody, good day to you, welcome back. It's a fantastic day for me because my stress level is falling. We've got the Duramax injector truck off the rack. Now the other Duramax truck is on the rack. That one's here for uh, some front end rebuild stuff. Dave's taking care of that one for us. We're finishing up just the knickknacky items on this one, but more importantly, I get to get back to this 04 F-150 that has the remanufactured engine with the uh, the tick noise. Um, it's been a while since I had this truck in the shop. It was out back waiting on approval from the warranty company. It was waiting on parts and then it was waiting on a space and then it was waiting on me and then it was waiting on the holidays to get through. So needless to say, I should have had this truck Ding, ding, shut up. I should have had this truck out of here like three weeks ago, but I'm, I'm getting to it. It's, you guys have been asking about it. Uh, we are going to move forward with a couple of the repairs. Uh, we're not doing exactly what I wanted to do, but uh, I can only do what I'm authorized to do. Uh, now, just for uh, the sake of being thorough here, I'll remind you guys, we are hanging out at Door Ajar. That's how many miles we have. There we go, 200 and, oh, 200,372.5 miles on the odometer. Uh, again, this thing had a replacement engine installed. It's loud today. Pop that hood real quick. We had a replacement engine installed in this and on startup, it was making a ticking noise. The, uh, the people that built the engine wanted me to tear this down pull the valve covers off, run the engine with the valve covers off, which consequently flung oil everywhere. All right, moment of truth. Dave, do the honors for us. Fire it up. Okay, it was this side making noise. Are you happy warranty company people? Are you happy with what you've done here? This is what you made me do. Yeah. <laughs> when you guys ask us to do stupid things, this is the stupid result that you get. Now, can we fix this engine, please? Here, I'll tell you what, let's get some light on the subject here so we can see what we're talking about. Begin illuminating procedures now. All righty. So we can see I've got the valve covers off on both sides. This one, this one. We heard a noise from uh, from the driver's side. Uh, it was tough to hear because there is a broken slash cracked exhaust manifold on the passenger side, which also made a noise. We're gonna rectify that as well. But the primary concern here was the engine rattle noise on startup. Now, the warranty people wanted me to uh, replace a, uh, the cam phaser and only the cam phaser on this one side over here. So I've got a new replacement Ford phaser unit. What we need to do is uh, basically shove a tool down in there that holds, that, uh, holds the timing chain in position. And then we're gonna pop this phaser off and then put the new phaser on, uh, set the chain back on it, and then I can reassemble it. Um, if you guys were here for the previous video on this thing, you, had, uh, you should recall that all of these spark plug or the, uh, excuse me, the ignition coil hold down bolts were broken off in the valve cover. And if that was no fault of the people that built the engine, those covers went on after uh, later on and afterwards. But uh, I also have a set of replacement covers over there in the boxes. So what we're gonna try to accomplish today is getting this phaser peeled out of here and we'll get the new one set up in position. Once that's done, I'll throw the covers back on it. We can restart it, confirm that uh, that exhaust manifold is in fact broken on this side and then uh, I'll have to get in there and then replace that manifold as well. Uh, I'm really trying hard to get this truck back together properly for this fella. He's got a lot invested in this thing and the results that he ended up with were not exactly what he paid for. So I'm trying to make this right, trying to fix the world a little bit as much as I possibly can. Uh, one other thing I failed to mention, when we did the tear down on this side valve cover over here, we had found in the previous videos that there was a big chunk of wax piece paper business hanging out inside of there. And uh, I had speculated that that wax paper was ingested by the engine. It was part of the, uh, the covering for shipping or whatever. 
I had figured that it was ingested in the engine and uh, it was down uh, perhaps in the oil pan or uh, sucked up in the sump tube and it could have been causing low oil pressure. The, the builders of the engine didn't seem to pay that much mind and they just said put a phaser in it on this side. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's all we're authorized for. So uh, like I said, let's go ahead and get to it and uh, see how this, uh, this situation works out. I'm not supremely confident that changing this phaser is going to solve the issue but uh, like we said earlier, that's not my call. So I can't do that. I can only do what they say I'm allowed to do. All right, let's move it in for its close up and get started. Need to lose all the towels that I've got here for engine covering. Get all this stuff peeled aside and out of the way. Come here, towel. Pull our coils back out, I guess. Or unplug them. I need to move the harness some. It's, it's in my face and I can't like it. Yeah, that should be good. Tuck that one back some. Okay, now we've got some exposure going on here with our cam and our phaser assembly. So because this is a uh, warranty claim type of job, they're not gonna authorize me to pull the entire cover off the front of this engine until we change this cam phaser. So I had to order a, uh, a tool. Basically, it's, it's called the wedge tool. I had to order a tool to lock the cam chain, the timing chain in position. And then I gotta try to pull some slack in the chain in order to get it loose. Once the chain is loose, I can unbolt it from the cam and then try to walk this uh, phaser out. I don't know if it's gonna work. It might fail and slip and then I've gotta pull the cover off anyway. But uh, I've gotta do it the way they told me to do first. Realistically, I'm probably gonna end up getting pretty screwed on this deal for lack of a better term but uh like i said i gotta do it the way they want me to do it so what we need to to set up here is this little wedge looking bit of business right there what we have to do is sneak this wedge down in between this side of the chain and that side of the chain and it's going to depress the tensioner right there see that chain tensioner once that's depressed, I'm gonna to try to rotate the cam some to get some slack, and then I'll hit this uh, phaser with an impact gun and see if I can't get the, uh, the fastener to come loose. Now, keep in mind, I do not like doing this. This is not, uh, not the ideal way to accomplish this, uh, this, uh, this repair, but my hands are tied. So I gotta do it the way the people writing the check wants me to do it. There we go, that's all the way down. So I've got the tool wedged in there. Got a little bit of slack on the chain, see that? It's because the uh, tensioner has been uh, depressed ever so slightly. So now I'm gonna come in here with an impact and try to crack that guy loose. Now, I'm extremely certain that this camshaft itself is actually gonna rotate once I get this thing disconnected. So what I will do here is, on the R mark, cause that's just the closest one, I'm gonna put a, uh, a sharpie reference mark indicator for which link is going to point at that r there's another l mark down there and that's actually the one to use because this is going to be i think the left side but that one's not contacting and we know it's all timed correctly so we're just going to reference uh, the r mark instead so now i'm going to come down here and we're going to use the 90 degree impact gun and i'm going to try to crack this uh this bolt loose right here so let's get on it It's uh, not wanting to come loose. Well, that's nice. Yay. Let's try it with a different battery, see if it comes off. There we go. Okay. Woo -hoo. Okay, now it's loose. Let's make sure that wedge didn't go anywhere. Shove that down a little harder. Yep. Still loose. Man, I, I don't like this. This is, this is not the ideal way to accomplish this. But it can be done. And that's just what I've got to do. There's our fastener. Let's pull that guy out. So there's a few things that I do not want to happen here. 
I don't want that wedge to pop out and let the chain fall loose because it'll come off of the crank and it'll put the engine out of time. I also do not want this cam to move. So what I'm going to do is find a lobe that is uh, unloaded and sticking out 90 degrees. I think I can use maybe this cam lobe right here. What I'm gonna do is get some uh, screwdrivers or something underneath of it and just use those to prevent this uh, prevent this cam from rolling around after I take off the uh, that phaser right there. Uh, normally I would just like to stick a wrench on it because there tends to be a hex on some of these camshafts that you can just stick a wrench on to keep them turning. Now, this one doesn't have that one, so I can only really use the leverage of the, uh, the gears to maneuver this cam, which is very unfortunate, but that's, uh, that's the way, that's the world I'm, I'm playing in right now. Okay, after toying with the idea of sticking screwdrivers and rags in there to lock in the cams, I, I noticed I've got a really big flat right here and a couple flats here throughout the, uh, the assembly. So I think rather than trying to uh, screwdriver this, maybe I can get these uh, Milwaukee vice grips in there. Not sponsored, that's just what I have. I'm thinking maybe I can get these vice grips in here and just vice grip on that flat piece right there of the camshaft and use this to lock it in. Let's see if it's gonna work. Uh, I think I'm a little too tight. Yeah, let's back that off half a turn. And I'm letting this uh, flat piece on the vice grip rest on uh, this piece of frame here. So it will not be able to turn. Let's see if this is gonna work here. Click that on. Okay, might be in business here, check this out. I'm rotating the cam and it's wanting to come back this way. So this thing hanging out right here, leaning against this part of the frame, this uh, shock tower, that's gonna lock that cam in position. I think that's gonna work. Chain's a little loose. Phaser's a little loose. Let's try to wiggle this guy off of here. Okay, we're exposed now. All right. Nipper. So now, yeah, we're totally loose. Let's get the chain off of the phaser. Remember the reference mark there. Come on off there. Oh, <laughs> I don't like this at all. Now, even though that wedge is in there, I'm still keeping a little bit of back tension on this chain just to make sure it doesn't, uh, doesn't want to fly out of there. I need to get something in here. I'll shove a flashlight in it. Just to keep a little bit of tension pulling back on this chain. I don't want it to, to get too, lo too loose and then slip off of that wedge. Okay, all right. Let's go back this up some and go fetch the, uh, the other phaser. We'll compare them real quick like. Oh, uh, where did I put it? It's in the box, I think. Yeah. There she is. Yep, that is a Ford Motor Company phaser. Got it from the dealership. So that's our new one. Here is the old one. So we're looking pretty close. I believe it's the right unit. Part numbers. Let's check out these part numbers here. Ta -ta -ta, 39, 3932630605, and some other numbers. Minimal differences, except look at here. There's a certain thickness going on there with that spring, and this is a thicker spring. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, Six Charlie five two four. Six Charlie five two four. Okay. So most of our numbers are matching up here, except for the final ones on on the other side here. 
But I got it from the dealer, used the VIN, so they say this is the right one. Maybe this thing has the wrong phasers in it from the reman people. Or maybe one of these is updated and one is not. Uh, regardless, this is the one I'm supposed to put in, so that's what's going in. Oh, let's take a quick reference on the alignment pin that goes in the camshaft. Make sure that that is where it's supposed to be. Pointed right here, pointed right here. Yeah, I think, I think we're good here. Okay, yeah, this passes the visual inspection. What's with this? That one's got a pin sticking out. This one has no pin. Okay. Well, this is the unit. Whoa, don't break it, Ray. This is the unit we're supposed to use. Let's go get this thing set up and, uh, and bolt it in. Cringy. So cringy. Okay, coming back in. Let's get a hold of the chain. Pull it tight again. And I'll extract my chain holding tool. And I've got to start by aligning my little mark with the R on, uh, on this phaser itself. tooth off. Yeah, this is hard. Kind of looking like it's aligned, I think. Yeah, that's good. Right there, yep, that's good. Let's get this thing wrapped around. Okay, she's on. Stay. Let's give it a recheck real fast here. The mark looks good. That all seems to be correct. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the bolt. And I'm gonna run it all the way down by hand. I need to make sure that alignment pin is sitting in the groove on the front of the cam. I think it is. I'll try to rotate the cam and see if it starts to act on the uh, the phaser here. And it is. Tighten it down a little more. Nope, now it's going farther. We just lined up that pin with its recess on the cam face. Okay, that's on. Good. 15 millimeter. Let's put a little bit of torque on here. And so far, I think we've got it together. Let's give it a little bit more torque. I think we got it, guys. Let's pull the pull the wedge and see what happens here. Uh oh, come on wedge. My wedge doesn't want to come out. There we go. All right, there she is. Wedge is out. It's all on its own. Cool. We got somewhere with it. Now this came out with this impact. It's going to go back in with that impact. See what happens here. Click. Still good, nothing moved. Let's release the camshaft. 
and that is a successful camshaft phaser swap with the use of the little Amazon wedge tool. Okay. Okay, so it's nearly valve cover installation time. So I do need to pull these coils back out of here and I'm gonna have to blow off and probably dump a little bit of oil down in this thing. Rinse these guys out. This thing's been sitting around for, like I said, about a month and everything's dry. It's been somewhat exposed to atmosphere. So we're gonna give it a good, decent wash down with some motor oil. I'm gonna pull that guy out because it's all drained away and I just don't want to do a dry start on this unit. So let's pull all these little obstructions and whatnot out of the way here. Get rid of that. Pull our uh, vacuum tube off and stick this aside. You guys see what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Put that up there. So now we can get a, or now we have a space here to get that cover back in position. Let me go fetch some uh, some motor oil here and we're gonna rinse all this uh, this nasty business off. Now we don't need boatloads of it, just enough to kind of give it a, just a little wash down. And we're gonna use a carefully blended and pressurized mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, a couple other inert gases, and a little bit of carbon dioxide. Uh-oh, pieces flew in there. shut that off for right now. Don't need the air anymore. Okie dokes, getting in a little closer, we can see we have the cylinder head right here, and then this section, the front part, that is part of the timing cover. And you'll notice that there's this little gap right there. See that little gap? What we need to do is put a dab of sealant on that little gap. If you do not, what can happen is oil will wick out through that gap and you'll have a small oil leak. So we're gonna throw some RTV in here. Ew, that's chunky and gross, hang on. That was the dried piece that, that came out. There, good enough. So what we'll do, again, we'll throw some of this uh, RTV over that gap. We don't need loads of it, just like a little dime-sized piece. And we can get our, uh, our new covers in position. And this is another situation where it was dormant for the win on that cover. Nobody else offers replacement units, but uh, Dorman had one. Uh, part number for the driver's side is 264909, and I think the passenger side was 908 or 910. Uh, I couldn't really see it because there's a shipping label on the box, but I'll check it once we pull it out of the box, in case you wanna know. And again, the reason for having to replace these covers is these little bolt, uh, uh, little threaded bolt areas right here were broken off of the other other cover they were stripped and cracked and there was nothing securing those coils uh, inside of the spark plug tubes with the exception of gravity and uh, that's uh, that's not the proper application of gravity so we definitely have to bolt those things down now what I'll do to lubricate this is I've got a gallon jug with about two or three quarts of uh, oil in it and I'm just going to hover this funnel over the areas that I want to lube and then use that to, uh, to get our oil down inside of there. It's a little messy, but we're going for a rinse job on these cam components. That way we don't get a dry start. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it. Plus I can't reach this gallon jug all the way back in that hole. There we go. Getting a little bit on our, uh, our rocker arms. Yeah, rocker arms and lifters and valves and whatnot. A little bit right there. Yeah, that should be good. Sweet. Okay, new cover coming in. It's got a gasket installed already. We just need to slip this thing down into position, get it seated, and we'll bolt it all together. And we're running into a hang up. There. Is that vacuum tube coming from the rear of the uh, the intake manifold 
the primary vacuum source for the brake booster. Oh, come on now, don't do this to me, Ford. It's displeasing. Stuck again. Ah, shh. Gasket fell out. Okay. Let's pull her back out and re strategize this. Okay, trying again. Uh, what I did is I took that vacuum booster tube, took it apart some, and I stuck the hard line down there instead of up here. Maybe that will give me the uh, space that I need. So, gasket's back on. Let's try to sneak this cover into its new home back here. Now, what I need to do is verify that, uh, here, let's take a look on that side. I need to verify that gasket stays in position. And I'll also need to check and make sure that I can get that vacuum tube back out and up here on the top side once this is a, uh, Preliminarily seated in its uh, in its position here. And I think it'll come around. Bolt misaligned. Bolt realigned. There we go. Let's get this center bolt screwed in right here. It's going to locate the component and keep it from flopping around. That's good. Okay, stay. Got an eight mil socket here. Let's get all these guys threaded. Good, 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 good. That one's going in. They're all going in. It's fantastic. Okay, moment of truth. Can I squeeze this vacuum pipe back out? And not really. Steering shaft's in the way. That's, that's not what I wanted to do. It's gonna come up. I shall not be defeated by a vacuum tube. Or, or will I be defeated by a vacuum tube? Maybe yeah, I can bend it. Oh, sorry if you can't see. Come on. See, the issue is, is if this comes off the back of the manifold, I need to take the manifold off to reconnect it. I'm probably just going to take that uh, steering shaft loose. Or maybe I can just kind of pry driver this up and out. I'd like to bend it a little straighter, but that's not working out for me. Yeah, see, we're, we're just stuck right here. I'm sure this could be done if orchestrated carefully. I'm gonna take the shaft loose. That's probably the best way to do it. Shallow 13 on the uh, fastener there. Untick you. Okay, going into the cabin. There, how about that? I didn't see what I just did. I heard the ratchet go off though. And it still doesn't want to fit. Now it does. Sweet. That was fun. Okay, now I'm gonna go through and Get all the perimeter bolts tight on this cover right here, and we can continue with the uh, reassembly. Got the eight mil coming back in.
that one way out back. Let's get on you. Ah, uh, my ratchet turned around. Yeah. It's going in reverse now. And the solution will be the 8 mil extendo wobble socket. That'll get me in there. Yep. Clicks. One more way down in that corner. Good. Let's finish off the front side here. Couple down below. So far so good, I think, says I. Let's get the next one here. Fantastic. Okay, that's one cover installed. Let's throw in our cam position sensor right here. Let's get this guy back inside of its little hole there in the front. Snap you in. Very good. 10 millimeter bolt for that cam sensor. Let's get that guy restarted. So now that the cam's covered, let's blow the spark plug tubes out one more time. A piece of silicone right there, yep. Good. Next up, we'll drop the coils in and then get these guys bolted down. See that one? That one's broken. We're gonna put that one in the front in case we need to change it later. It's still functioning, but the bracket was broke. I'll try to kind of fix that, uh, that bracket business up with uh, maybe some washers or something. We shall see. There we go. Yeah, I'll leave the broken one way up here. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll put the bolt in and then just put a big washer over it and that should be good to, good to at least clamp that thing down. If my guy wants to change that out later on, we can, but it shouldn't be necessary just to, uh, just to get this thing back together and see how it runs after, uh, after the phaser change. And good old Dorman, look what they did. They knew the reason that people replaced these covers and they gave me fresh new hardware to go on these, uh, and these coils here, and that's super nice of them. Thanks, Dorman. You see, you give a company enough bad PR, and they might actually listen to the consumers, because I've seen Dorman come leaps and bounds lately, and they used to be like the, the company of last resort where people just didn't buy their products because it wasn't... It wasn't up to par and it wasn't what we expected. Perhaps they were uh, originally focused a little too hard on the, uh, the do-it-yourself and at-home gamers rather than the people with professional experience. And then they realized that people with professional experience had an influence on the home gamers. Stole that from AVE. And they decided to change their ways. And I, and I can definitely appreciate that. So again, good on them. Yeah, see how I did that with the uh, that extra big washer? There, nice and secure. Last one way out back. Uh, can't get the wrench it on, there we go. 
my wobble bit is wobbled in the wrong direction. There. Got he. This thing is going to be so nice when it's done. Did I miss the hole? Yeah, I did. I'm over here screwing the wrong... I can't say that now. No, that was going to sound wrong. It just, uh, yeah, it wasn't threaded in. Oops. Let me recover that washer that I dropped back there. Yep, oops. Almost created a accidental exploitative or exploitative or... You know what I meant. It could have been uh, interpreted as foul language or foul verbiage. Use your imaginations. You know what I, you know what I was gonna say. Let's try this again. There we go. Now we're screwing the right hole. Come on, click. Got it. Excellent. So now we can get this harness kind of back in its position here. Get everything on this side reconnected. There's a fuel injector there. We'll get our coils back on. Our coils reconnected rather. Let's see, we'll put the harness on the stud. There's studs sticking out of the, uh, any of these guys right here, sticking out of the top of the cover. And then these little plastic guys for the harness clip onto those units. Let's see where this goes. Come on, coil. Okay, that one's on. That one's good, okay. I missed an injector back here, no worries. Click that guy in. That other one came off. There, okay, everybody's connected on this side. Uh, let's see, Put that back. Forgot where that went. Oh, this goes up to the mass airflow, okay. Oh, here, I wanna get, um, I wanna get that vacuum tube back in its little bracket real fast too. Let's slide that over the stud. Let's get in there. There, now that that's all back where it should be. We can put the rest of the hose back together. It's gonna slide on right here. You guys were asking where my hose clamp pliers are. Um, I broke them and have yet to have the gumption to order a set of replacements. I, I know I need to, and it's annoying me that I don't have that tool anymore. I was using them as like kind of a pry bar, and I broke them. That was, that was my own fault, it was user error. Okay, we've got the tube here for the uh, fuel rail pressure sensor tool. The hose, the hose for the fuel rail pressure sensor. Let me get that guy back on the little outlet here on that assembly, and then we'll plug it back into the sensor right here. That's good. Okay, this side's looking pretty good. A couple other little knick-knacky things to install. A little noise suppressor device, that's gonna go here. Bolt you down in a minute. Camshaft position sensor, let's plug that guy in. However that plug goes, like so. I don't have the bracket over here just yet for this power steering reservoir, so I'll do that later. Let's route this over here where it belongs. That's all good, okay. I found the nut for this bracket. Spin that guy on. Okay, that's all good. Moving on. We've got a PCV hose. 
That's gonna attach here to the top of the cover and back over there onto the manifold. Clip you on two places, flashlights down. The gravity is strong today. So I think we're looking good so far. Let me find the bracket for this power steering business next. And I think it's gonna go like so because the pump reservoir is gonna hang out here, but I jumped the gun and installed that little bolt right there, that nut rather, installed that prematurely. Let's back this guy off real quick. Yes, yeah, one of those things that happens when you have parts in a pile for a month. That's how she's gonna go, okay. Put that nut back on. Good. So down at the bottom of this bracket, there's a bolt sticking out of the cylinder head and it fits into a groove down at the bottom there. I've got, uh, I've got it in position, but I don't think I wanna tighten that up just yet. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, we can do that right now. Yeah, that fit in perfectly. I thought I was gonna have to do it from the bottom, but it appears I can squeeze my flange in right here and get a hold of that, uh, that bolt. That's good. I'll reach down with a ratcheting wrench and tighten that one up, and then we'll go back to our 13 over here, tighten that up. Then I can bolt on the, uh, the reservoir right here. Let's see if I can find that fastener without being able to see it. It's tucked away. I can reach down and feel it, but I can't see it. There's a flashlight going down. Was that a 15 or something else? And I'm going the wrong way. Right? Wrong? Yes. It's like right, it's 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 right there. But it, that also feels bigger than a 15, like a lot bigger. Maybe it's 18. Switch, let's try this one. I'll figure out what socket it is first. Yeah, that's 18, okay. Trying again, let's switch out the tools. Squeeze that guy in there. Yep, got it. Sweet, okay, that's on. So now that bracket is more secure -er than it was. Let's get this side tightened down. Beautiful. Now, the reservoir can be bolted into position here. Put that right there. Let's see, it's got three bolts that are gonna secure it. One there, and then two more on the back. Let's get these guys started real fast. Came right up. Two on the back over here. There's one of them. Second one, third one. That's good. Nice. Okay, so this side's looking pretty good. I think, uh, I think it's about time to get that steering shaft back together. Shouldn't be much to it. Mm -hmm. Threading, Let's sneak the gun in, tight squeeze, and the battery fell out. Awesome. Okay, let's turn, turn the wheel a little bit. There. How about now? Now we're good. That is aligned. Let's re-battery this. 
forward. Reload. Good to go. Okay, steering shaft is in, super duper. You stay there. Let's recover the flashing lights that all fell down. Okay, valve cover's on, wires are good, this harness is good, vacuum line's good, power steering's good, bracket both sides. Uh, let's move over to the left side and see what happens over here. All right, we're coming back in. It's it's actually the next day here. I had to uh, I had to duck out uh, when I finished up this side over here. It is remarkably humid today. I, it was cold last night. It's in the high 70s this morning, and look at how humid it is. This is just condensed water. Look at that. Everything is wet. Everything is wet. The floor is wet. What is it? Oh, here's that video you said you were gonna be in. Hi. Hi. Uh, every video. Look, look at how wet the, yeah. Yeah, the look floor. At that. The floor is wet. And look, the look, walls are wet. Like uh, we're not going in there. It's nasty. Bunch of <laughs> bunch of dudes hanging out in the bathroom. Yeah. Completely wet. That's a smiley face. You guys can't see it. Soaking wet. What is it, Dave? Oh yeah, let's see that. Let me show you guys this over here. Yeah, sorry, mid-video intermission. It's so humid that you can see the fluid levels in the bottle. See that one right there? There's the, uh, the condensation line, and this is empty right here. Condensation line on that one, empty right here. It is so flipping wet today. I have not seen wetness like this in the atmosphere in years. It's crazy. I mean, I doubt you guys care what the, what the weather is like in Florida because there's like some kind of snowstorm going on up north, and. Uh, uh, you know that's 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 horrible. I, I feel bad for that one because we we don't need we don't need you guys covered up in snow and sleet and ice and all that nature. That stuff is a uh, that's dangerous, and we do not need any more danger in the world. Anyway, we're gonna I'm gonna get started on this other side. I've got the valve cover over over in the box. Uh, we need to clear apart some of all this. Uh, uh, well, this wiring and components and hoses and I need to move this ECM out of the way and then uh, we'll get that other valve cover snuck back into position over here. We'll get that one bolted down and then I can try to restarting this engine. We'll see how much uh, how much noise it's going to make. So I guess I'll go ahead and get started by re-removing this ECM. Let's get this thing out of the way. Set you up there. I'm trying to clear back all that space we need to sneak this valve cover in. This is the, the more difficult one to uh, to get into position. So I, I thought the other side was harder because there was stuff in the way, but this side appears to be uh, much more harder. I need to disconnect all these coils, injectors, etc. Pull all that stuff out again. So we're kind of repeating the other side, but with a twist. There's another injector back there buried. Another coil buried back there. Yeah, I had to throw some gloves on too. I was trying to touch all these components and they're so saturated that I had like this oily, gross film on my, my flanges there. I couldn't like it. Let there be light. Let's get some illuminators in position here. A couple stick lights. And we can at least see the things that I would like to see. That way I can see what I'm trying to do in here. Let's see, I've got that uh, cam sensor down there. Unplug that guy. Get this harness nice and freed up. And the flashlight fell down. Surprise, surprise. And rearmost coil. Let's get that one extracted and unplugged. Out. Good. All right, now my harness is mostly free. We're making some space here, folks. Bear with me. That's good. All right, got all these wires out of the way. Let's go ahead and get back in here with that air gun. We're going to clean off. Uh, any uh, towel fibers or dirt that's made its way under this valve cover area and we'll put the cover back on. Oil. Re 
is shiny. All righty, funnel is coming in. Let's dump a little bit of oil in here to pre-lubricate everything. Just some good old 530. Gonna get all the cam lobes, the rockers. There we go. And a little bit on the chain. Good, 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 good. A bit of chain lubricant. Got a wee bit on this chain. There we go. That was a lot of bit on the chain, but no worries. Like I said, this is all gonna get drained out and dumped out again before starting. This is a more of a rinse oil procedure here. Okay, that's good. Put that in there. Now we're ready for some sealant and the cover to come into position. So here, let's give a, a wipe to the surface where the sealant is to be applied. Put a little dab right here. There we go. And same thing down on the bottom. Don't know if you guys can see down there past this, uh, this cam gear. Give that a good wipe. And again with some sealant. See here, I'm trying to see the area. It's a little tough. Come on, seal it. And a little dime size, a little dab right there. Perfect, okay. Sealant is in position. Let's back it up some and get our cover maneuvered into its new home. By the way, the, the dormant part number for the passenger side is the 264908, not a 910. So I, I unboxed it and that's the, uh, the numerical assignment that this cover has been given by the folks at Doorman. Not sponsored. That's just who makes the replacements for these because nobody else does. And they're not horrible. They're, they're, they're of decent quality. They said Dorman's got a, used to have a bad rap, but I think uh, in light of that scrutiny, they have uh, been able to improve their product. Ooh, grab a toss. Didn't want to do that, but it's there. Here, I'm looking around the backside, make sure that gasket's good, it didn't fall out. Yeah, we're all set here. Let's maneuver our cam solenoid through its hole and line up the bolts. There we go. Cover is in position. Beautiful. So I'm going to get a couple of these bolts started and I need to peel that wiring harness up and around to make sure that I can get it out from the, uh, the down low position that I stuck it in. Rot row. The countertop boys are over there grinding again. It might be a little louder than what we're accustomed to because I'm outside today. That one's tight. Clicks. Might as well tighten this one up while we're at it. There we go. Let's make sure these other ones thread up. Good. Good. How about that one out back over there? Can I get it? Oh, yes, I sure can. Okay, harness. I, I went a little too far on that. Let's uh, peel this harness up and out. If I can. I may have shot myself in the foot there. Let's find out. Yeah, I stuck it way, way down in there. I wonder if I should just go ahead and remove this uh, accumulator right here. Or, no, I'll keep doing this. I think I can, I can get that out of there. I think, I think I can, I think I can. Yes. 
Yeah, we're good. It's it's through. No worries there. Let's get the back piece of it up and out and in position where it's supposed to be here. Good. Okay. One bolt way down yonder. See it sticking up? Let's sneak ourselves in this hole here and get that one tight. take the extension off here. I remember I had to do that through the fender well when I had this on the rack. I'm wondering why I've been able to reach it this way, not through the fender well. It's kind of odd. Oh, you know what? I know why. There's a, there's one or two fasteners that are omitted from this Dorman uh, cover that were present on the, uh, the factory OE cover. That's why. And the one that I, that I couldn't reach, that was the one that caused me to have to go through the fender well. I think. I'll check it when I get it up in the rack just to make sure. Clicks. There we go. There's another guy hiding out. Right down there. Give it back to me. Cool, got it. Eight mil extendo wobbly for the win. Love the wobbly bits. Okay, we're now back to ignition coils again. Let's blow these spark plug tube holes out and uh, get those coils dropped down in position here. Nitrogen coming in. Good. Okay. Coil 30. Let's get these guys in. There's still some grease down in there, so I don't need to re-lubricate them. Let's get all these units back in position. We'll use our new Dorman stainless steel hardware. It's almost like they made an attempt to fix that design flaw. How about that? There we go. You know, I should probably just rub my mouth about you guys. Maybe I'll get a free trip to Dorman too. Aha. Uh -huh. And by free, I mean invited because my diesel logic trip is kind of on my dime. I'm driving over there and uh, I'm securing my, uh, my place to stay and I'm not coming to work. So that cost me money. So not a shell. Uh -huh. The assumptions have made you guys who were assuming into an ASS, sus, sus, sus. So there, don't assume things. If you do not know what I'm speaking of, I, uh, I made like a seven minute little rant video the other day. Uh, not normally something that I do, but the comment section, uh, well, you guys asked for it. So I figured it was time to turn off the filters and, uh, and let a few people have it. And that's pretty much what I did. Video did pretty good too. You guys kind of ate that one up. The comment section was insane. Uh, if you guys wish to uh, take a look at that video, I'll leave a, a link to it down in this video's description. And I'll probably put one up here too at the top if I remember. Uh, but it will be in the description, pinned comment. And if again, if I remember right up here at the top. But don't leave right now if you use this link right here. Uh, or if you do, use this link and then come right back over here to this video because uh, you should really see the end, end result on what we're doing here. Not to get us too far off topic or whatever, but you know, I never miss that opportunity for some slightly shameless self-promotion. Uh -huh. Okay, all four of the coil bolts are threaded in position. Coming back in with some wobble action. Let's get these guys tightened down.
excellent. So it's now connector time. We're gonna start from the back and move our way to the front. Seems logical. We're just gonna go coil, injector, or injector coil, there we go. Got that bass backwards. Injector, coil, injector. Fortunately, they're color-coded. I don't know if they will plug into the wrong connector. Let's try it and find out. Mm, negative, they will not. So they're color-coded and different, uh, different connector types here. Another one. Uh, there we go. And the last injector right over here under the coolant line. That's good. Camshaft phaser solenoid right here. This one plugs into a little noise suppressor right there. We've got a stud sticking out that fits over this plastic fitting to secure the harness. That slips on right there. And then, I think this one goes not there. This one goes up here on the throttle body, I think. Yep, throttle body connector. That's good. Oh, what else are we missing here? Hmm. I've got one other one, but I don't know where this one runs off to. You guys could see what I was doing. Yeah, I've got this one here, but I don't remember where it goes. I'll find it. Doesn't go there. Negatory. Here, let's get the uh, oil fill little tube device unit installed. Just kind of screws on like so. There we go, that's correct. This plug goes here, shapes and colors. And this one, I still don't know where this one goes. But, oh, you know what? That one goes down to the cam sensor in front of the, uh, the engine here. Yeah, that's where that one went. Okay, that's good. So now, I think I need to get the AC hose hooked up and we've gotta get the ECM put back in its position. So there's a bracket here I need to reinstall. I'm gonna go fetch that bracket. It goes right here on the firewall and then the ECM bolts to the bracket then I can connect the ECM connectors. Okay, bracket coming in. I don't think I need to go back behind this anymore on this operation, or at least I hope I don't. I do need to put the transmission dipstick tube back in, but I'll have to do that from the firewall side, or the fender wall side, rather. Anyway, this guy's held on with the uh, three fasteners. If I can get you guys the thread, we're good. That one's on, good. Numero tres. Now, we get this big connector out of there, and we can take the ECM and fit that thing back into its position. Yeah, stay there. I think we're four fasteners for the ECM. Uh, or maybe three. No, just three. Cannot reach. There we go. Got it. Okay, one more large connector here. And the other one is hiding right in front of my eyeballs. You guys probably saw it before I did. There we go, that's good. Connected, 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 ground wire's connected. This thing's connected, that thing's connected. Everybody's connected, looking good. Let's go ahead and get this AC line reconnected to the uh, receiver dryer down there. 
and then I'll go ahead and pull this into one heck of a vacuum because we saw all that moisture. I know it's inside of the system, so we're gonna suck that out for about a half an hour just to uh, boil out all the water that has uh, managed to migrate its way in. Couldn't see the fitment right there. Ah, I dropped it. Okay, I undropped it. It has been recovered. Attention. Repeat damage caused by failed ignition coils is not covered by warranty. Thought that was just for the escapes. Yeah, the escapes used to take out coils or the coils would fail. And it would take out the ECM. That was an extension. Hit the ground, no worries. Okay, plug that guy back in. Let me go fetch the AC machine and we're gonna start the, uh, the vacuuming process here. And pull this system down to get rid of the moisture. Yay. Okay, machine is here, powering on. Let's get our connectors connectored. We got our high side coming in right now. Open that valve up. Low side is back there on the line we just bolted in. Beep. There we go. Turn this guy to open it. Now when you open these, if anybody's out in the field, you open these up. Don't open them until it's tight. You just open it and turn it just until it stops and then you're good. That's all you have to do. Because what those things do is they push a little uh, little needle down and that opens up the Schrader valve inside. You don't need to crank on them because all that that will do is wear out the threads. These are aluminum. It just wears the threads out and then things stop working and it's, it's frustrating. So when you open them or close them for that matter, uh, don't make it super tight. It's unnecessary. Here, let's uh, fire this machine up. I'm gonna put it into a vacuum and Suck it down for about a half an hour or so. Oh, there was some refrigerant in the lines, so it's going to do a recover. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Yeah, recover, please. And a uh, half hour vacuum. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to uh, get the intake ducting and everything reconnected and uh, make the best use of my time here. All righty, so got the intake ducting back on. We're still vacuuming. We're about halfway through. Battery is reconnected. I have the, or I'm not gonna put the uh, da, 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 the transmission dip stu dipstick tube back in yet, words, because I still have to pull that driver's side exhaust manifold, passenger side exhaust manifold off and replace it. But we've got everybody connected. I dumped the oil out, put a new filter on it. So it's had a new oil change, filled the thing back up. Uh, batteries up, fluids are in it. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the key and uh, see what this thing does when we restart this unit. Let's key it on. Oh, I can't out reach. Shut that off. Okay. Give it a couple cycles, let the fuel pump prime everything back up. And let's let it ride. Okay, she's running. Yeah, we can clearly hear that's got a nasty exhaust leak over here on this side. That's that ticking noise. The one over here on this side, we heard all that chain rattle on startup. Unfortunately, this thing sat so long and all the oil uh, bled out of everything that we're going to have to, uh, I'm gonna have to let it cool off again and do another cold start to make sure we don't have that chain rattle. But over yonder, we do, yeah, we heard that, uh, that exhaust shut up now. Uh, what's going on with that exhaust is once that heats up, the metal's gonna expand some, and there's a crack in that manifold somewhere. As everything expands with the metal, that crack seals up, and then we no longer hear the noise. So again, we're gonna have to pull that manifold off and replace it on that side. So far, so good. She's running. It's alive, no fluids dumping out of it. 
I don't hear any ticky tick action going on under the valve cover over here. No misfires, no vacuum leaks. She's in good shape. So let's let this AC stuff finish up. Yeah, 10 more minutes or so on the vacuum. We'll recharge the system. And then uh, later on, I'm gonna have to get this back on the rack and get to work on that manifold over there on that side. However, you guys, I'm gonna have to save that manifold action uh, for another video. This one's getting long and I'm trying to keep these under an hour and a half. And I know I keep saying that. And every time I say that, my video gets longer and longer and longer. I'm really gonna try to cut this one down to maybe 40 minutes or so, I think, I don't know. But uh, anyway, as I was saying, that one's gonna have to be saved for another video. And unfortunately, since we already did the cold start on this, I'm going to have to uh, do another cold restart later on to verify that that noise on this side of the, uh, of the engine and the timing system is gone. So we have inconclusive results at this time, but uh, we will get a finalized uh, overview on this at some point whenever I get that manifold changed. So having said all that, guys, I've got nothing more to offer you on this particular video. As always, like to thank you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think about the situation in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later. End of video, end of Ferd, end of Triton, end of camshaft phaser, end of exhaust leak. Powering down. Pew.